Welcome to On and Off the Field with Durf and Dylan. Yeah. This is the live show, 7 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, every Tuesday. We have a whole bunch of eyeballs in here. We are so oh, excited man. that you're here. Let me put up a banner that says, Welcome to On and Off the Field, so you know exactly what you're listening to. I'll even put up the ticker. Yeah. Fancy little ticker. I made our logo in the corner a PNG finally. So there's no white background. That looks nice and snazzy. Yeah. And I see 13 eyeballs. It's still going up in here right now. This is what we want. So since you're in here, let's just double that number from 13 or 14 to like 30 and do this. Share, subscribe, follow, like, do it all. Do everything, yeah, do every it. single thing possible. And Durf, after he drinks his beer, will tell you where you should be subscribing, <laughs> following, sharing, all of that good news. Yeah. So you can follow On and Off the Field on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, where we are airing live right now, as well as for uncut episodes, our live shows, and other great content. Make sure to rate and review the show on iTunes so we know how we're doing and what you like or dislike about the show. You can find all these links at onoutthefield.com along with our fundraising efforts and to learn more about Durf, Dylan, and the show. Like Dylan said, RTS Sports Network is down this week, but when it comes back up... Head on over. You can head over there where you can catch on and off the field live on Tuesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And our recorded show is on Fridays from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And when the network website comes back up, get on there and check out those blogs. There are some great written articles out there. We have some great writers writers on the network. So Get over there when it comes back up and get reading. Absolutely. One hundo percento. Yeah. So for those that are here, welcome. And at some point tonight, if you watch the live video earlier, you're probably here because you want to win that Amazon gift card. I know. <laughs> I know that's why some of y'all are here. You're just like, shut up and say the <laughs> word so I can move on with my life. Well, I can't. We have to wait a little while. We have to That's have some bit. listener retention. Yeah. You, know? you have to stick with us. It's, it'll be a good time. I promise it won't be awful. So <laughs> to win the Amazon gift card at some point around, you know, middle way through the show or something mm-hmm. like that, I'm going to give you a code word. Ooh, code word. The code word will be used. Make sure you share the stream here. Uh, mm-hmm. like that'll be one part. Make sure you share what, what you're watching right now to your own feed. We got to get those eyeballs up and then I'll give you the code word. You'll take that code word. You'll go listen to the Mike and Mike man hour. Mm-hmm. Their, their Facebook pages, you know, the Mike, and Mike man hour, they're on the RTF sports network. Um, and then when their stream starts at 10 PM Eastern standard time tonight, you tell them the code word and share the stream. Boom, $25 gift card to Amazon. Yeah. That's it. You have to know a word like and share that. some streams. That's simple. Is that is that really? It's probably the easiest gift card you'll ever get in your life. 100%. You can yeah. take that to the Amazon bank, baby. <laughs> Jameson's lighting up our comments already. Nice. He says he, he's still on this... Um, Still on the preseason here, how coaches are going to determine the final rosters. Each team has to cut their uh, rosters down to 80. They should have 90 on them right now, so 10 players. Yeah, I think we're going we're gonna to hit on that a little bit when we get to our NFL news segment. But yeah. uh, right, right quick, since that was our, I, that was our Amazon spiel. Uh, we also have our charities going, Feeding America and the Boys and Girls Club of America. And speaking of the Boys and Girls Club of America, we are working on their fundraising efforts by doing the OOTF Fantasy Football League, which we still have plenty of spots open for whoever wants oh, to yeah. join in Get on that. Get on this league. You want to be there. We have a guest tonight, Mike Reeves from Twist Sports yeah. Nation. 
and uh, we're going to see if we can get the twist guys in on this. That's going to be one question idea. we'll we'll pose to him. But yeah, you got to like the OOTF family group page, which some people are already watching from. And then $20 is the buy-in, but that money will just go towards charity. And then if the league is canceled, the season's canceled, I can't give you your money back. So just know that. That's our disclaimer. I'm not but it's a good cause. Time. So It's a great cause. You'll be fine. It's only, yeah. it's only $20. Yeah. But yeah, it's going to be a really fun league. Um, we'll probably do the draft live. We'll have a lot of fun with it. It'll be a fun season. So make sure you jump on that. Make sure you stay tuned all the way until this code. If, if you miss the code word, you're going to miss it. So you have to watch until at least until the code word, <laughs> bare minimum. And yeah. I'm going to take that banner down and we're going to move on to our next segment. Our favorite segment our also our least favorite segment and definitely least favorite transition. <laughs> the other the sports. Other sports. <laughs> I hate this segment. Oh. Transition. That's yeah. fine. It's really fun though. <laughs> the other sports. We're probably gonna get a t-shirt made. That's like that's uh, that'll probably say the other sports on it. We gotta work on this merch life. Yeah. It's got we gotta get on that scene. But for the other sports, we have a lot in here actually, because sports sports are rolling. Yeah, baby. Sports are rolling. It's a lot of fun. And one that's really really rolling Mm -hmm. is the nba the nba has zero new positive coronavirus cases zero zip nada none no covid19 cases so people are starting to leave quarantine they just released a picture today of people were Mm -hmm. on the court uh i didn't personally see the picture i clicked on the article but they didn't include the picture in there but i was watching dan patrick he said he saw the picture i I didn't really look that hard, mm-hmm. but people are virtually just, they're starting to leave quarantine. They're staying in the bubble, but they're a lot out of the rooms mm-hmm. and people are going to start practicing. It's, we're going to have games here soon. When's the first game? Isn't it next week? July 31st. Um, yeah. I think it's July 31st. It's, it's exciting. Yeah. I mean, normally I don't really care about the NBA, but this is, mm-hmm. this is sports. Granted, baseball is kind of going right now, and we'll talk about them here in a minute. But the NBA is—it's going to be a—it's going to be a race for a couple teams to make it to the playoffs in like mm-hmm. an eight-game regular season, and then it's going to be like a playoff. They're going to be playoff games that we've never seen before. It'll just be a weird scenario. Mm-hmm. What's up, Von Gliz? He says, "What's up, fellas? Ooh, what's going on? What's popping? Talking some NBA." I mean, I'm really excited to see because there's some players kind of already missing. I don't even know if mm-hmm. James Harden's in Orlando yet. We don't know how long Zion's going to be out. Mm-hmm. The NBA is going to look a little weird, and there's no favorite part is there's no home court advantage. Zero. Right. You're, everyone's just here in this place, and mm-hmm. the real question now is the is really the 76ers. They were amazing at home during the regular season. Mm-hmm. And then on the road, they were abysmal. Like, <laughs> so is this going to affect some teams is the real question of playing virtually on the road? Because mm-hmm. there's no fans either. So that plays into it a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it'll be definitely very interesting to see how these play, how some of these teams that take away that home heel advantage. But did you see the... Uh... The court layout for this? I did not. Oh, it is fancy AF. Um, so they're doing part of a Black Lives Matter movement on the court. Um, I heard about that a while ago. I did back. see yeah. it in detail, but I did see a quick glimpse of it this afternoon. But like the amount of cameras that are gonna be on this court is gonna bring this game to the next level in like interaction for fans it's going to be going to be insane Ooh, so like new angles and all kinds of yeah new fun stuff from what i heard it was like it was 20 i think i heard 22 cameras will be on that court do you know what's normal not 22 i can tell you that not 22 (laughs) just not 22 (laughs) hey that's fine 22 sounds like a lot interesting and then von Bond says nothing much is going on. He's getting ready for this game on Saturday. Nice. 
I, I want to see a game. Yeah. Let me know where the game is. Maybe I'll go. I got nothing better going on in my life. <laughs> I got to watch some. I got to watch sports, man. Uh, I got to watch sports. So, yeah, NBA yeah. season will get started here soon. Really excited to see that. And um, this this is something that I didn't see. So go go ahead for this. This is yeah. your news. The Minnesota Timberwolves are apparently up for sale again. And they are looking to get $1.2 billion for the franchise. Uh, owner Glenn Taylor is looking to sell it for that much. Apparently, he's been trying to sell it for years, and I think now maybe he's trying to uh, actually sell the team. And the kind of the big thing here is one of the probably biggest named Timberwolves players to ever play for the Timberwolves Kevin Garnett is actually in the leading group to buy the franchise. Yeah, Kevin Garnett lead, and I find that interesting with Kevin Garnett, a few a, a past player for no, the Timberwolves, looking to buy them. Um, because there's also news that the Mets, with the Mets selling their franchise, that I think it was J Lo and uh, Alex Rodriguez are looking to buy the Mets. They're leading a group to do that. So, yeah, all these players looking to by franchises are very interesting. Um, so moving out of the NBA while we wait for Fred to fix his audio here, whatever the case may be with that, uh, the NHL has had two positive tests since they have started their camps out in Edmonton and Calgary, the two different bubble locations for the NHL playoffs. Um, yeah, only two tests out of all the players. Other than that, they are good. They're going to start playing on August 1st. And I feel like that's probably one of the most successful franchises so far in, uh, or the successful uh, sports that have kind of handled this coronavirus situation. The NHL has been very quiet. They've only mm-hmm. had two positive cases. They figured out their bubble locations. Everyone agreed on everything. And the players just showed up, and they're going to play. And they're going to start on August 1st, and I'm personally pretty excited, and hopefully the Penguins can win it all because that's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts on the NHL? Um, they're probably going to be the one league that does it right and gets it done. And it, I'm excited the only to see one how that the playoffs. finishes. Yeah. I'm excited to see how their playoff format, um, how the competition kind of goes um once they start their playoffs so that'd be really cool i think i think really cool to see that there's uh two hub cities i think the two hub cities i think is probably one of the most interesting parts with the nhl but yeah i'm uh excited to see them finish yeah i'm curious with the two hub cities if you know for the finals they'll Mm -hmm. obviously obviously be one coming out of calgary and one coming out of edmonton are they going to travel back and forth to play the finals, or are they just going to pick one location for them to play the entire finals? Because it's kind of like an east west yeah. thing, but that would kind of defeat the purpose if they had to travel of the bubble. Like one team is going to have to travel. Right, That's the but... only problem I see happening, but maybe it's not going to be that big an issue. You know, you take a private plane, a very small amount of right. contact, but still, it's you're going to have to figure out how to meet them up at some point. Well, yeah, and I think that's because their finals are going to be just two teams. So right. instead of moving, what is it twenty four teams that are moving? Or I can't remember what the it is there. But Don't instead of moving, me. instead of that massive <laughs> amount of teams that have to move between cities, they're only moving two. Yeah, or right. Really, only one at a time because one's going to go to the east and one's going to go over to the west. I mean, the west. It's, yeah. So yeah. it's a lot less travel. Um, but yeah, I uh, yeah, I think they got it right. That would be the that'd be hilarious because everyone always kind of mocks the NHL. It's one of the least talked about sports out of like mm-hmm. the four major sports. Um, the commissioner of the NHL has always been kind of mocked because he hasn't handled things properly with there being so many NHL player strikes over the past couple of years. Right. Well, more than couple, but you know <laughs> what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but it'd be funny if they were really the only ones that could do this. You know, MLB, mm-hmm. what if that really gets shut down? NBA can't finish because of a second wave. NFL just really can never get going. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. That's um, 
it would be hilarious, and it would really prop up the NHL this season if they can finish. That'd be that'd be amazing for them. But moving on to baseball, the Toronto Blue Jays have been kicked out of Canada. They will not be able to play in Toronto. You know, the Toronto Blue Jays will not be playing in Toronto. Very very awkward. <laughs> but a lot of people said, "Hey, why don't they just play in the AAA stadium and then Buffalo that they have?" Mm-hmm. Well, you sh- you should know that. Triple A stadiums are not as nice as Major League Baseball, mm-hmm. at least facilities wise. Yep, smaller batting areas and cages. Mm-hmm. I, I think they have their bullpen is like underground or something, or their film rooms are underground. Something mm-hmm. weird that I heard. Yeah, um, the locker rooms are just straight up smaller, which right. creates a coronavirus concern. Mm-hmm. They don't want to play there, and the players said absolutely not. Like it's basically like being demoted. Like no one wants that. So <laughs> right. it's official that they have asked other teams, mm-hmm. other major league teams, about uh, sharing a stadium this season. Other teams, at least on the East Coast, they don't want. Obviously, they don't want to change time zones. Right. Um, so they're gonna try and find a team that might want to share a stadium. Yeah, I mean. I feel like you uh, could increase the risk here of positive cases by two teams technically sharing a stadium, but it maybe it's not any more than two teams playing. So, yeah, it's I, I have a concern about them virtually having to share a locker room, mm-hmm. but so it's not completely the same as you know if you're against another team that right. have to use two different locker rooms. But yeah, it, it they still have pretty much the same amount of players sharing Mm -hmm. a field. Um, It's kind of an ugly situation, but I understand why Canada would do it. Canada's been closing off their borders to America for a a while now. (laughs) Tensions increasing with our brothers from the North. Um, (laughs) But this, this, yeah, this leads, I think this might lead to what happens if the Toronto Blue Jays and they ain't Major League Baseball. They can't reconcile with Toronto. What happens if the Blue Jays return to America? They build a stadium in Buffalo. Can Buffalo Ooh. have a Major League Baseball team? Not outdoors, I don't think. Probably not. I think it would have to be an indoor stadium like Toronto's is now at the Rogers Center. Um, yeah, why not? I think that'd be a fun concept because now like, what if this happens again? What if right. Canada says completely, you know, screw off America, get yeah. your teams out of here. I find that an interesting concept. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's pull Toronto blue Jays out of Toronto, make them the Buffalo blue Jays. Let's go hey, for it. Let's do it. The Pagulas can really make a, a push for that. <laughs> yeah. Why not buy the team, move them to Buffalo. There you I go. I highly doubt that would happen, but this could be a, a talking point. I think just something fun that I thought of. But other than that, um, some big news for um, Alyssa Nakin or Nakin. I I, I would think Nakin to the two Nakin. That that does make more sense. Terrible pronunciation. The big news for (laughs) Alyssa Nakin. She was put in as the first base coach. She's the first female uh, coach ever to be an on-field base coach during a game. Wow. But she has been with the organization since 2014, mm-hmm. and she was the first ever female to get a baseball coach position in the first place. So she's already made big news once mm-hmm. um, by being the first female to do something in baseball, and she's basically just keeps making history. I don't know how you go up from here unless she becomes like the head coach. Yeah. But congratulations to her for breaking ceilings. You know those that yeah, those glass absolutely. ceilings. Absolutely. Opening up spots for females. Yeah. Good stuff. I don't stuff. know if females is the word where uh, I've, I've heard, I've seen people hate, hate it when other people say the word females, like yeah. they call them, but that's just what we did in the military. You know, we didn't oh. say girls or women. We said females. So that's just kind of how that's just what, <laughs> that's just me, <laughs> me thing. So yeah, sorry, everybody, if that offends somebody, but one last piece of baseball news. Mm hmm. The Astros played today. (laughs) An expedition game against the Royals. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. (laughs) Yeah, you could guess it. Jose Altuve, Alex Bregman, and George Springer were all hit by a pitch today against the Royals. 
<laughs> Ooh, oh, that that's feels good stuff. Good. Man. So the question I really pose is they're obviously going to get blasted mm. all season long. This isn't good. This isn't yeah. news. This is just we're glad it's happening finally mm-hmm. for their cheating scandal. But are they going to get out easy a little bit here? There's no fans. When they travel, all they have to do is worry about is getting hit by a pitch. Mm-hmm. There's no fans that are going to be cussing them out, banging on trash cans, doing all these fun things that we expected that fans would be able to do this season. Right. So they, are they just kind of getting out easy here? Maybe a little bit. I feel like having that fan interactions, not being there, they're probably getting off a little easy. Um, yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what some of the stadium like media coordinators can do when they come up the bat. Like they could just pump in booing music or booing sounds. Like that would help. I think help get some of that pain on them. But um, but yeah, I think definitely think we're gonna, I think definitely think we're getting off easy with no fans. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, and I know they really can't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, right. it's just kind of the. It's just kind of the reality that we're we're forced with, but I like I do agree with you. I hope hopefully the media people in the stadiums can, you know, let's put up a trash can banging sound when they go up to bat. Let's let's there just do go. something. Let's mock <laughs> them a little bit. That's, the fans can't do it, so mm-hmm. pump pump in some booing noises. There you go. Go for it. So I think that's all we have for other sports. We don't have too much NFL news. It's been relatively quiet on the mm-hmm. NFL front. Um, And then we're going to jump into our main segment of fantasy wide receivers. But right now, really all we have is the NFL and the NFLPA, thank God, are starting to kind of come together and figure things out. Um, The first one, as Jameson has pointed out, the NFL has proposed a zero-game preseason to the NFLPA. It's Mm -hmm. only proposed. It hasn't been accepted, but that's... Literally what the NFLPA already said is they want zero games, so they're yeah. going to accept it at some point. I don't know why there hasn't been news that they've already accepted it. Well, I think it was breaking news. as Yeah, so it was breaking as we were about to go live. Um, oh. NFLPA leadership tells players during conference call that there won't be any preseason games this year. Well, there you go. So it is official now. Wow. Alrighty, it's official. <laughs> so there will be no preseason games, uh-huh. and also, as Jameson said, um, they they it's usually a ninety uh, person roster. It's been cut down mm-hmm. to eighty, and I'm pretty sure it's going to stay eighty. So they're mm-hmm. going to have to cut ten players, and they're going to go into the season with eighty because they have to have backup for people that get the virus, and it's, right. they're expecting more people to drop a little bit easier this season. So mm-hmm. it's going to be eighty players going into the season. So with the, without a preseason, now the question is, are we going to see more injury in the regular season? And how are coaches going to cut those 10 people? Is it just going to be based off of practice, expedition games? Mm-hmm. I've heard rumors that teams are asking the NFL about, are they going to be allowed to do expedition games with other teams? Like their own little mini preseason with like Pro Bowl rules, you know, like no tackling, right. but still at full speed. Yeah. And that's kind of the world we're going to be living in. Mm-hmm. What do you foresee I for mean, the NFL? I've heard it's, there's going to be a lot more uh, live action in the practice drills or like when they do like their seven on sevens or full 11 on 11, uh, full practice scrimmages. Um, I think because there's no preseason games, you're, that's where the coaches are going to make a lot of their decisions to cut the trim down by 10 players. And I don't see an exhibition game being able to happen with the NFL just because of how much the NFLPA and the NFL have fought over this with trying to get the guidelines down for every scenario with what's going on right now. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think you're going to have an an issue with injuries, probably starting out, probably players that took time off instead of training on their own or making sure they're still staying, staying in shape, um, just maintaining their fit, their fitness. And 
you're, you're going to have injuries. And I think that's one of the main reasons why you need that 80 man roster um, for this year specifically, just because you could have people get injured. You can have people test positive and the amount of testing they're going to do. Um, it could get ugly for a little bit for the NFL. If they, tr- if this, ha- if such and such happens or in the fall and they're using 40% of that, leftover roster from 53 to 80 and just uh just a man a team to be there on sunday that's yeah that goes with just locker room space in general yeah you say that you say that you know you can't be within this distance you're gonna put Mm -hmm. a plexiglass use every other locker or whatever right you have 80 people now (laughs) yeah i don't know if they're all gonna get dressed i would assume that they're probably not all getting dressed but they're at least on the roster you need a spot for them you know, right what, in your practice facilities and all of that. But speaking of testing and COVID-19, um, they agreed to do daily testing. That's what all the players wanted. They mm-hmm. kept saying, how are you going to keep, keep us safe? And that's one way is make sure no one's positive at virtually any given time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so daily testing, they expect to get the results back within 24 hours. I don't know how that's possible because the MLB already failed at that once, but they're, the NFL will try. And then... Uh, if the testing falls below 5% positive rates, they'll move the testing to every other day. Mm-hmm. Well, so not bad. I would assume they'll come out, they'll probably come out of the gates above 5% with how many players are going to be 32 times right. 80. I mean, it's a lot of players. Um, and what w- we've seen a lot of players practicing together, going out to, you know, parks mm-hmm. and high schools and, that people are not quarantining as they probably should, at least that we've seen on social media. Right. So I would imagine that we're probably going to be above 5% out the gate, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But uh, when did they, re- I think they just started reporting today, if I'm not mistaken. I think rookies. Uh, started today. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think rookies started. Yeah. Started today. And then injured players show up in the next two days. And then the veterans yeah. will show up next week. And then yeah. we're gonna have we're gonna have some freaking football here soon. Woo! Yeah. Some freaking football. So close. Two players that will not be playing football is Michael Ben and Antonio Brown. They have announced mm-hmm. their retirements. Granted, Antonio Brown has announced his retirement about 15 times. <laughs> so we're not sure what's gonna happen there. But Michael Bennett has officially retired 11 seasons, mm-hmm. uh 69 and a half sacks, a lot of tackles, yeah, 13 forced fumbles five recovered fumbles i'm just trying to do this off of memory uh-huh. but the is he get I, I, is he a hall of famer is he a hall of fame defensive end he won a super bowl with the seahawks won a super bowl with the patriots but are the numbers there that are really going to push him into the hall of fame not right off the bat i don't think it push him in the hall of fame right off the bat i mean i think i i think you did i think you forgot one stat though dylan which one did i forget the tiniest shoulder pads ever Oh my god! It, it, <laughs> it's so true. Maybe that's what pushes him in. That, that very well could be his because... fall, Hall of Fame induction like moment will be <laughs> Michael Bennett and his statue right next to him, and they put the shoulder pads on, and they're virtually invisible. And that is what we had. <laughs> they take the statue off, and it's just these little thin things on his shoulder. There you go. And everyone claps, and it'll be an amazing moment. Yeah. And the Mike and Mike man hour tuned in. He said he's not. He needs other players to suck, and his arms just aren't that big. Or, or his arms are just, aren't just that, that big. big yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that it is, I've always wondered why he did that, mm-hmm. but I guess it's so he can. He has more of that the swim move, movement. Yeah. yeah. But I assume that we're. I, I'm kind of with you that he's not really a Hall of Famer. Antonio Brown will not be in the Hall of Fame. He didn't nope. play long enough. He's an absolute basket case Mm -hmm. but he said the risk outweighs the reward for returning to the nfl so he says he's just not into it but yeah i'm sure a lot of a lot of teams will be reaching out to him at some point in the middle of the the season if they get hit by the virus (laughs) true happy retirement this like i thought we were getting really close we were getting real close (laughs) with them right there there were reports (laughs) where they said man the Seahawks are really interested in Antonio Brown. I was like, don't you <laughs> dare. 
Don't you even think about it. I won. Uh, no, just go out there and get Josh Gordon. He'll be reinstated at some mm-hmm. point. Just stick with Josh. He's a good dude. He just likes the weed. Just, <laughs> just get Josh. <laughs> we don't need this absolute insane man. I pray for his health. I hope mm-hmm. he doesn't have like his brains aren't complete, complete uh, scrambled eggs up there. But mm-hmm. I, yeah, no, I don't. I don't want. I don't want to go anywhere near Antonio Brown football wise in my <laughs> locker room. But yeah. his rap career is taking off, says Mike and Mike Man Hour, which Mike oh. and Mike Man Hour is the show that you want to go to with the code word after this at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You're going to want to go to the Mike and Mike Man Hour, and you want to tell them when they ask for it, you're going to want to tell them the code word. Are you ready for the code word? Is everybody ready for this? Let me Are you listening? Banner. We have only three people tuned in. Oh, well, those lucky so, three people have a chance. I mean, and Mike Reeves is sitting in the backstage waiting to come out and talk fancy oh, yeah. wide receivers. So for, oh, we're up to four. Oh, well, Here well. it comes. If you want to win an <laughs> Amazon gift card tonight, your code word that you need to go to Mike and Mike Man Hours live stream at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is banned. B A N D. Banned is your code word. I'll tell you, I'll even type it in code word <laughs> band. There you go. Sending. There we go. It's doing yeah. it. I've never done that before. Oh, it sends it to all of them. Oh, oh that's oh, cool. We, we fancy. Look at that. Yeah. Code word band. And the reason that I chose the word band is because of our interview. That'll be airing Thursday. Oh, yeah. Our interview Thursday. Uh, Thursday show interview with lead singer for Arshinik, a Poland mm-hmm. rock band. Lead singer, Ophelia. Yeah. It was a great interview, about a yeah. half hour long. So that will be uh, airing Thursday. So that's why we chose band. Make sure you go to Mike and Mike Ann Hour's live show and tell them the word and share the stream. Mm-hmm. And you can go in there and win an Amazon gift card. So yeah, very exciting it. stuff. And I have to unfortunately change something up right here all righty yeah oh we, we keep fluctuating here really heavily with our list our viewers here so anyone just tuning in now check your comments yeah check the comments for the code word band that you need to tell mike and mike hour mike and mike man hour and you can win an Amazon gift card. So we are ready to transition to our main segment. The fantasy wide receiver talks with Mike Reeves from Twist. And that's actually really, it's not going to work for me, Fred. What's that not doing? Oh, God. No, no, it's not going to work for me, Fred. It's not going to work for me. I have to change it up. There we go. It was two lines. I didn't like that. It was I was really uh, hating okay. on that. I thought you were saying yeah. like StreamYard wasn't working. I was like, uh, oh no, that was just <laughs> that was just really bothering me there. So that's not going to work. So we are ready to bring in Mike Reeves from Twist Sports Nation, yeah. and also Mike on the mic. What's up? What's up, fellas? How you doing? Oh, could not be better. I warm my mics for you. Dude, <laughs> I'm gonna guess Adam Thielen is in your top ten, huh? He's not. He should be. Though. Oh, oh, boy, oh boy, getting some feedback from your side as well. So I throw that out there. Oh, on mine, you are. I think so. I thought I would just let you know that real quick. We did not test this because we are not a professional podcast. Everyone, <laughs> keep that in mind. We go on. We learn on the fly. Yeah, we just we just bring them in. We get some feedback. We're like, hey, we got some feedback, and we'll we'll be fine though. That's how they do it on Pat McAfee's show too. Oh, there you go. We'll figure it out. That nah, will be fine. So we're here to talk fantasy wide receivers, Mike. We're super excited. Um, real quick, you want to tell people about Twist? Well, yeah, I I didn't know anything was wrong with RTF. I did go on yesterday. Uh, Twist airs 1 p.m. followed by Mike on the mic at 2 p.m. And I thought it was my computer, but apparently it was not. 
It's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be back up and running. Uh, we go live um, on Facebook on Saturdays. Otherwise, you can check us out on rtfsportsnetwork.com when they're up and running and twistsportstalk.com. Ooh, dot com. Nice. Dot com. Not even, not even dot org. You're fancy. Nope. You got the com. Fancy yeah. like you guys. Yep. Yeah, I got the com. Good stuff. So, uh, I think to stick with tradition, like we did with our our last guest uh, from uh, last week, Durf did his top ten wide receivers first. So, Durf, you have the floor, and I'll even give you the full screen. Oh man! Ooh. Here we go. Ready? Are you ready for this? Let's do it. Oh, there we go. All right. So I think number one is about as plain in sight as it can be. I got Michael Thomas at number one. For just one reason alone, 99 Madden rating. He's clearly the best wide receiver in the NFL right now. Number two, I went with DeAndre Hopkins. Um, Bill, or Bill O'Brien clearly did not get enough for him. Um, he's going to wreck defenses in Arizona when him and Kyler Murray get their uh, chemistry going here when the season starts. Um, so I have him at number two. Number three, I was a little hesitant to put him here, um, but it's the quarterback he has and just the consistency that we've seen out of this team. Um, so I got Devontae Adams at number three. Number four, can't forget about this guy talking about the cheetah, Tyree Kill from Kansas City. Uh, his speed alone makes him up there in fantasy football um, because if he has the speed and Mahomes can get uh, connected with him um, on those great routes that he runs, you're going to get points out of him. So I have him at number four. On number five, I went with Chris Godwin. From the Bucks. Now, I feel like there's a chemistry already built between Tom Brady and Chris Godwin um, with the whole number, jersey number ish scenario that was going on. And I feel like it's going to be like a Brady Moss kind of chemistry here a little bit. So I'm going to wow. see, I'm looking at Chris Godwin <laughs> to uh, put up more numbers than other receivers on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, number six, I went with Kenny, Kenny Galladay. Um, the guy was a beast on stats last year. I believe he was number one in touchdowns um, for stats. So it's almost a no-brainer to have him in the top ten, but he's not a name that you would that I didn't know I would pick for my top ten. But I have him at number six. Number seven, I went with Julio Jones. Um, he's a good receiver when that team can stay healthy, when Matt Ryan can play well, and when they're not up 20 to 3 against the Patriots in the Super Bowl and just fall flat on their face. So, Julio Jones is going to be a good, another one to pick up. Uh, I have at number seven. Number eight, I went with Amari Cooper. Um, we all know Andy Dolan's going to be throwing balls to him. For touchdowns by week three, because Dak Prescott will be on the bench. Wow. <laughs> and uh, if Dak Prescott, does, Dak Prescott is still there by week three or four, um, Amari Cooper got, Cooper got paid. He's going to want to perform. Keep him on your roster for fantasy. Now, number nine, when I was looking up kind of – where other experts had their players ranked for wide receivers and kind of look at that and say, no, I think it should be this way instead. Um, I looked at this wide receiver and I was like, hmm, I don't know. And then I thought about it a little more and then I was like, you know what? I think he's going to be one that you're going to keep, keep an eye on because of the situation on the team with kind of a rebuild with a first-year head coach with a new quarterback in there. And that's why, number nine, I went with DJ Moore from the Panthers. Um, not, I think it's a, a solid pick, probably in your mid-rounds. And I think he's definitely a wide receiver, too, at the least. Um, but I think he'll get good stats out of him with Teddy Bridgewater there. 
being Mr. Dump Off, um, throw short yard, short yardage passes, and uh, go from there. So, number 10, couldn't leave him out. I think he's going to be do great over here. And I went with Stefan Diggs as my uh, number 10 fantasy wide receiver because he clearly was worth the money or worth the trade or worth the draft picks. Going to be worth the contract when Buffalo signs him full deal. And keep an eye out for him with Josh Allen. All righty. So first and foremost, we got someone controlling Twist over on the side, calling you out, comparing Godwin to Moss. Holy, <laughs> holy baloney. Is that like a player comparison or just like a stats comparison? Well, I feel, I'm, I'm saying it's a chemistry comparison with Brady. Okay. Brady and Godwin already had that chemistry from the whole jersey number situation. So you know they're already they're already clicking. And I think you're gonna have the same situation with Chris Godwin. He's been getting better. He's an explosive receiver for the Buccaneers. He's got a better quarterback now. Mike Evans is probably gonna be double teamed a lot more because the Opponents are going to think that Brady's going to want to go to him, but it's actually going to be Chris Godwin who Brady targets the most. And I think it's going to be similar to like your your Wes Welker or your Danny Amendola or your Julian Edelman situation in New England with Brady. Um, but I think it's – you could say similar to Brady with or Moss with numbers, but I think it's the chemistry there that I'm looking at. That's interesting. And they're calling me out as a hogwash comparison, but that's fine. Bring it. That's that's fine. We have other people on the network that think Jameis Winston's a top ten quarterback in the league, so it's fine. <laughs> not gonna say not gonna say names. But we're gonna let Mike do his top ten. But apparently we should have got Ben's from Benzie's bit. Um so that's yeah, our I'm bad. Back to back champ there, Matt. You lost. <laughs> I got uh, two rings. So just sit back and listen there. All right, well, here we go. I'll give Mike the solo screen, and here we go, top ten. All right, well, I I will go down from ten and end with my one. I did make note of Changing it up. As well, yeah, you got it at number one. So uh, falling in at number ten, I do have Juju Smith-Schuster. I think when you have a fully healthy Ben Roethlisberger, and he is primed for a huge season so he's in at my number 10 number nine I do have Kenny Galladay he did lead the league in touchdowns last year uh the trouble with me that he didn't go any better is Stafford's health in real you know no real backup there uh if Stafford goes down Galladay's in big trouble but he did have a great season last year so he did make my top 10 Durf and I were exactly the same at number eight with Amari Cooper um, again, he probably would have been higher here if he didn't have health concerns, uh, but he's just a stud, and Dak Prescott will be playing quarterback the whole season. Number seven is Mike Evans. Uh, if you're going to compare anybody on that Tampa Bay Buccaneers to Randy Moss, it'd be Mike Evans because Randy was a deep threat. Mike Evans as well is a deep threat, uh, over a 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns last year. Uh, Brady just doesn't have the arm that he did when he had Moss. Um, But there's going to be a lot of weapons on the Buccaneers. Uh, Double coverage, if you double anybody, there's so many weapons on that team that it's going to be tough. You're just basically going to have to play zone defense against against them to to come up with anything. Number six, I have the Cheetah. Um, Again, these are, are based on hypotheticals and health concerns. He typically gets hurt a couple games a year, but when he is healthy, Uh, He is one of the top five receivers in the league. This pains me to say my number five uh, is a Packer, and that's Devontae Adams. Ooh, He's basically all that the Packers have uh, besides a rushing game um, on the receiving core, so he will put in the work. Number four, I do have Chris Godwin. Um, like Durf had mentioned, he's not really the slot guy. He's the number two, but they'll use him in the slot. Um, last year, he had 86 receptions for 1,300 yards and nine touchdowns, and that was with Jameis Winston. So, yeah, he's going to have a, a big, big year. 
Number three, I, I still have Julio Jones. I got to see a year where he doesn't produce before he falls out of my top three. You know, the biggest thing in fantasy football is consistency. And yes, his touchdowns are, uh, uh, excuse me, aren't always there. I believe he had six last season. Um, but he, 99, you know, receptions and 1,300 yards, year in, year out, out, Julio Jones is always there. So show me a year he's not until he doesn't crack my top three. And then our one and two were the same, DeAndre Hopkins. New look, Arizona Cardinals with that Kyler Murray connection. I think he's going to have a huge year. But it is tough to top that Madden 99. Can't guard Mike, Michael Thomas. I think he's the consensus, if you ask anybody in the entire world, number one receiver. Yeah, it's just definitely. strictly the records he broke. Yeah. I mean, oh. when you have a when you have a wide receiver literally breaking catch records and you have him in PPR, I mean, he has to be your number one fantasy wide receiver. It's just a fact. <laughs> yeah. All right. I guess I'll spew out my top ten real quick and I don't know how how which way am I supposed to go ten to one or one to ten oh my now I'm now I'm confused you know just to keep things just to keep things spicy I'm gonna go from one to ten because I think our our one through fives are usually about the same it gets spicier um, mm-hmm. down near number ten so number one and I got Michael Thomas obviously we just went over that but number two I actually put Julio Jones at number two I love I love Julio man straight up. I, he did not have the touchdowns that you would like to see. He's getting up there in age a little bit. The dude can catch literally anything thrown his way. As long as the offensive coordinator, Matt Ryan, they're calling plays that go to Julio, those are catches for Julio. He's not dropping nothing. But another guy who doesn't drop nothing is D-Hop. It, Kyler, Murray, Ky, Kyler Murray just threw for over 5,000 yards last season, if I'm not mistaken. Now you're going to add DeAndre Hopkins. Game over there. I mean, that dude's an absolute monster. So he's going to have a great season. He's going to open up things for people like Christian Kirk and Larry Fitzgerald as well, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, number four, I have Tyreek Hill. I am a little concerned about injury, and there's a lot of studs on that offense, like McCole Hardman, Sammy Watkins, and now they bring in uh, Curtis Edwards there, the rookie running back. So I'm sure he'll still get his fair share of looks and Travis Kelsey, but. Uh, so he's at number four. I do have Devontae Adams at number five. Like Mike said, about the only receiving threat there really is. I mean, I'm, pro- I'm not really concerned about that. Uh, that uh, anyone else in that wide receiving core. Number six, I have Chris Godwin. Absolute monster season last season. I don't really see him going down in production whatsoever. If anything, with double teaming people like Mike Evans and you have Gronkowski going down the seam, Chris Godwin's just going to be open. It's just a straight fact. Kenny Galladay at number seven. He's just a stats monster. Like pretty much the same situation with the Packers, about the only guy over there who can catch a football. I have Mike Evans at number eight. Kind of the same scenario. If the team decides, hey, we should cover, we should double cover Chris Godwin this game. Well, guess what? Who's going to be open? Mike Evans is going to be open. So one of them is going to get a lot of looks every single game. I have Amari Cooper at number nine, especially. Um, I, I wanted to put him higher, but I just couldn't give that much love to a Cowboy. Uh, with Mike McCarthy coming over with a pass-happy offense he normally brings, Amari Cooper, $100 million man, just going to get balls thrown his way all game. And at number 10, Homer. Homer pick. Tyler Lockett, number 10. Had a perfect passer rating with Russell Wilson two years ago. Last season was okay. He had a couple of games where he wasn't a top 10 wide receiver. But overall, he was definitely close to a top ten wide receiver. So I'll give him I'll I'll, I'll give him uh, that number ten spot. Any major complaints? Well, I have two of Durf's and one of yours in my busts for the year. So <laughs> in your top ten, so we'll see. Uh, I think we at. We actually have a bust in our in our uh, our our bust category in your top ten. So this is yeah. going to get spicy. <laughs> All right. So let's lead it off with our booms. Durf, who do you got for your booms? So for booms, I have Adam Thielen and Cortland Sutton. Adam Thielen's gonna 
get a lot more targets without Diggs there. Justin Jefferson still has to get into that system, feel more comfortable, make the connections with Kirk Cousins. Adam Thielen is going to skyrocket like he's he's done in the past. And Cortland Sutton, top receiver for Denver right now for the most part. Drew Locks on a second year, getting better. The chemistry is building. I think Cortland Sutton is going to get major fantasy points by midseason. I don't hate it. Yeah. I, I'm definitely down on Denver personally. Mm-hmm. I just don't think they're going to be as great as people are hyping. I don't know why they're getting so much hype, but Cortland right. Sutton was a great receiver last season. So mm-hmm. if anyone comes out of there successful, it would be him. Mike. Yeah, I like both of those. My boom, he didn't make my top 10, but I agree with Adam Thielen. The trouble with Cortland Sutton last year is he blew up. I mean, what is he, 6'4"? He's just a he's a big body, prototypical right. Number one ride wide receiver, but they did go out and get Jerry Judy. Um, Noah Fant is going to be in his second year, so they finally do have a few extra weapons, which makes me nervous. I'd still draft him, mm-hmm. um, but I do like those two. Adam Thielen, you know, last year did get hurt. That's not typical of him. He's tip, you know, typically a very healthy receiver. Uh, with Diggs gone, it really does open up the door for a lot more targets his way. Justin Jefferson's a guy to keep an out on. He's not going to slide in and, and take that productivity that Stefan Diggs left with. Um, but as far as rookie wide receivers go, you know, in my opinion, he's going to have one of the biggest years. My other one is A.J. Brown, who almost cracked my top 10, mm-hmm. uh, really ended the season with a bang and uh, hell, had a hell of a campaign last year. So he's a, a boom. I almost put A.J. Brown as my boom as well, but I kind of replaced him with my other homer pick is D.K. Metcalf. Virtually the same person. Like, let's be honest, A.J. AJ Brown and D.K. Metcalf are the same person. They're, they were both rookies last year. They're both freaks of nature athletically. So uh, you can pick either one. I just trust Russell Wilson more than I trust Ryan Tannehill, so I'll take D.K. Metcalf there. And my other boom is Calvin Ridley. Julio Jones is obviously getting triple teamed these days at certain points. So expect Cal- I I was hoping last year would have been the year for Calvin. He had a couple of big games, but another season of that offense now, I got a lot of trust in Calvin Ridley. Yeah, yeah. especially in dynasty leagues, you look at Cortland Sutton, AJ Brown, Calvin Ridley. You know, those are guys if you get on your dynasty that are going to be your studs for, you know, six, eight, ten years. So mm-hmm. it's very true. All right, so the, I think this is where it should get pretty fun. <laughs> Durf, who are your busts? Oh, well, my busts are Juju Smith-Schuster. Saw that coming. <laughs> <laughs> and OBJ. I just – Pittsburgh, I just don't think they're there to get – to have Schuster have the, uh, the stats that you have seen. Basically, when Antonio Brown was there. Um, Smith Schuster kind of blew up with stats and last year was not a good year for him. I, I, I've seen there's a lot of hype for him right now and I just do not, I think it's very much buyer beware and I just do not see his stats ending well for this season. Um, OBJ, he is on a Browns team that does not know what they are. Baker Mayfield is half the time absolute garbage and there's too many hot heads on that team for him to have a good year. Yeah. My real concern with OBJ is like every season they have a new head coach and if they start the season one and three, yep, it's just going to explode and go terrible. So I, I definitely would agree with that. The nice thing with the Browns this year is bringing in Kevin Stefanski. You want to bring a culture to a team that's mm-hmm. drowning. And I think that's really what they're they're bringing there and working on, you know, the all the little things with Baker Mayfield. I think he's going to have a, a really strong year. But OBJ is just one of those guys that he's a red flag in dy- or in fantasy when it comes mm-hmm. to me, and I rarely touch him. So mm-hmm. he's definitely a bust in my book. You got any other busts? Oh, I got a bunch. Oh, he's got a <laughs> bunch. Oh, boy. I can't wait. So DJ Moore, bust radar, uh, had a great season last year, 
To me, Teddy Bridgewater just isn't the answer in Carolina. We had him here in Minnesota. You know, he's he is a dink and a dunk. And you looked at him in New Orleans last year. And really, to me, that wasn't Teddy. You know, that was New Orleans. And that's just the way that you could have thrown me back there. And I would have had a productive, you know, season as well. So mm -hmm. DJ Moore makes me nervous. He is a good athlete. He's a good player. Uh, but is he going to get that same productivity as he did last year? I don't know. Stefan Diggs is another one. Uh, just for the mere fact that Josh Allen can't throw accurately deep. You know, Kirk Cousins, despite some of the stuff he's not very good at, has one of the deep, best deep balls in the whole league. And Stefan Diggs is one of the best receivers at that deep ball. And I'm telling you what, you know, there's going to be some turmoil in Buffalo if Josh Allen can't accurately throw Stefan Diggs that pass. I know from experience, dude. <laughs> yeah. You would like to think maybe the new environment would help his attitude, but Buffalo is not that friendly of an environment, especially when you get later in the season. So mm -hmm. at least Minnesota had that indoor stadium there. <laughs> at, yeah, at least. Sure. Keenan um, Allen's another one to watch out oh, for. Um, as a bust? I, yep. You know, you, you oh, lose boy. Phillip Rivers. What's their quarterback situation look like? Um, he's had health concerns in the past. And, uh, you know, I on my bus radar, I wanted to go with some bigger names. Tyler Lockett was another one. I don't know what it is with Tyler Lockett. Um, I think it's just because he's got, like, some white computer nerd name uh, that I never just wanted to, <laughs> wanted to touch him. But when he is healthy, he does produce. Um, but he was another one for me to look out, you know, on the bus radar. Uh, especially I'm going to draft Tyler Lockett. And... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but I think DK Metcalf, like you said, really emerged last year. And I think he's going to be Russell Wilson's number one target moving forward. So Very interesting. Hating on my Tyler, but that's fine. I'll, I shall survive that. But my bus, I, I stole one from Durf, was Juju. I just, again, I just don't trust Big Ben to stay healthy. He literally got hurt throwing a football. No one touched him. He threw a football and got hurt. There's no way he's playing the entire season, and then you're going to have to deal with people like Mason Rudolph again. So I don't trust Juju. I don't trust that offense at all. And then another one, the only reason I put him here is because I've been seeing a lot of love for him, and I have no idea why. DJ Chark. I I don't yeah. get it. People are like, oh, keep your eye out for DJ Chark. You'll be a steal later in rounds. Sure, maybe he will be, but how much is he really going to produce for you in that Jacksonville offense? We love Gardner Minshew on the show, but it's a little bit sarcastic because everything on that <laughs> team is an absolute disaster right now. So, yeah, I don't, I don't trust DJ Chark. The only reason I put him there is because I've seen him in the headlines lately. DJ Chark's going to have a great season, says Tony DePool from Strikeout Beer. Wow. <laughs> I I don't see it. I He's just talking it, it into existence. Yeah. yeah. I'm, it's <laughs> and, and maybe I'll look like the dummy. The season happens. He lights up the he lights it up like Shaq Barrett did on defense. No one saw it coming. And everyone and maybe DJ Chark, no one saw it coming and it happens, and I'll be the idiot. I'll be fine with it. Whatever. Call me out, but I don't see it right now. Um, so we'll, we'll wrap it up with sleepers. Durf, who you got for your sleepers? So sleepers, and you guys have both mentioned these receivers, um, but I'm looking at Keenan Allen to be a guy to keep an eye out for. Um, I think the quarterback situation is where Mike kind of sees him as a bust. I kind of see that as a – you have two conservative quarterbacks right there right now. Um, they're going to lean on a one wide receiver for the most part. I think Keenan Allen's that talent that you're going to see um, with the Chargers, um, with all that talent on that team, and hopefully bring that team into better existence uh, as compared to last year. Um, the other one I have is Dylan's homer pick here, uh, Tyler Lockett. Um, I think because of the fact that DK Metcalf kind of exploded last year, a lot of teams are going to be focusing on him because he's the younger player. He's the future. Um, Tyler Lockett now kind of takes that veteran presence, um, on the field. 
He is the more seasoned veteran. He still has the explosiveness. You're going to have to worry about DK Metcalf, but I think Tyler Lockett's going to be one of those sneaky, sneaky wide receivers where he's going to consistently put up points like he consistently put up points um, as compared to his points last season. Um, so that's why I have him as a sleeper. Yeah, I mean, there were there were points last year where Tyler had terrible games, mm-hmm. and it and it happened when you know I made the playoffs. He would have his terrible games naturally, <laughs> right? But yeah, the Keenan Allen one's the interesting one because I've had Keenan Allen on my fantasy rosters for the mm-hmm. past couple of years. I normally draft him, mm-hmm. and it just it normally doesn't seem to work out. I love the guy; yeah. he's a number one. He feels like a good wide receiver, but. For some, it just never seems to pan out with him every single year for me. At least for me personally, I don't see right. it. But sure, all right. Yeah, for me with the Tyler Lockett, you got to look at it from a draft angle, and he's going to go before DK Metcalf. So it's hard for me to make Lockett a sleeper when he's getting drafted ahead of Metcalf. I do have Metcalf as a sleeper. Brashad Perriman moving over to the Jets probably going to take that number one position. Also, Michael Gallup, who started to, you know, come on early last year before he got hurt. But really, my sleepers come down to rookies. Um, If you look last year, the thing with the wide receiver position that's different than any other, you know, tight ends, you got to get your guy because there's just there's not this depth at the tight end position. Running back, Mm -hmm. you got to get your starters and you have to get a bench. Wide receivers, there's so many wide receivers I got a list here of six last year that were on the waiver wire. You mentioned DJ Chark, Michael Gallup, Marquise Brown, Terry McLaurin, AJ Brown, Devontae Parker. Those were all wide receivers who you could just go and grab. You can't get that with tight. Well, tight end Will Disley last year. There's some some surprises once in a while, but really right. the wide receiver is the position in fantasy football where there's depth. So really you want to get your running backs and your tight end and all this stuff, and you can take some risks at the wide receiver position. For me, some rookies to keep an eye on, Justin Jefferson, like I said, he's a guy who's going to come in, and he's going to come into that number two position, which a lot of rookies aren't coming in and playing. DK Metcalf did have that opportunity last year. A.J. Brown, both of which we had mentioned. Another one, C.D. Lamb, you know, he's a 10th round ADP pick right now. Um, Whether you get Michael Gallup late um, or an Amari Cooper, he's a great handcuff. He's an explosive receiver, you know, and they drafted him in the first round for a reason. And thirdly, um, I've been on this show, talked to Colts before. Michael Pittman uh, reminds me of a Mike Evans. You know, he's going to come in and I think have a big impact with Phillip Rivers slanging that ball this year. I know Durf likes Pittman. I know we. Yeah. I think we've talked about him in the past for you. Um, yeah, I like all of those, and I like the fact that you look at rookies because I have one on my sleeper list. But first up, I have Christian Kirk. I think you know. I think he might not be the greatest sleeper because I I drafted him last year, I believe. But with adding D Hop over there and already having Larry Fitzgerald, mm-hmm. Kirk's going to eat this year. I don't care what you say. This dude's going to have so many opportunities. You know, yeah, D Hop will be double teamed. You know, Fitz will always be looked at. But Christian Kirk will be slept on by defenders, I think. So make sure you don't sleep on him in fantasy. That was a terrible (laughs) line, but I don't care. I just (laughs) felt like I needed to say that. And then my other one is actually Henry Ruggs. Like, why wouldn't Oakland use this guy all season long? What do you have over there? You have Hunter Renfro. Your 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 best wide receiver is probably your tight end and Darren Waller. Mm-hmm. They have nothing over there. Why not just, hey, Henry, run and we'll throw you the ball. They have no reason not to do that. So I just I just think Henry Ruggs will also be another guy who has a lot of potential this year. But Tony DePool came in and said rookie wide receivers will struggle this year. They're not getting as many reps. And that's a fair point that we've made in the past. They don't have the preseason mm-hmm. games. They don't have as much training camp. It, it might impact them. We'll see what happens when we get through the season. That's why you might want to wait to draft them till later because it might take them three, four weeks to really catch on to the offense. 
And that's kind of the point is they might not explode right away, Mm -hmm. but neither did AJ Brown, neither did shark. I mean, these were guys you were picking up week five, week six. I mean, Devontae Parker helped win me a championship. He wasn't a rookie, but it was between him and AJ Brown that were there at the end of the season. You know, there's people that are going to be there late that aren't going to get drafted for Tony's point because they're nervous about it. Mm -hmm. But they're going to be there later on and they're going to help you win a championship. That's for sure. Especially with a player like CD Lamb where Amari Cooper, when's the last time he stayed healthy for a full season? You know, he goes down in week 14 for a couple weeks. CD Lamb's just sitting around, you know, to me, depending on how much depth your league has, you know, a lot of times you hear handcuffs at the running back position. There's some good rookies on good teams that I would consider handcuffing. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very fair point because handcuffs are like a whole nother conversation you can have in <laughs> fantasy. That's for sure, especially at their running posi- running back, back position like, uh, let's say, Dalvin Cook with Alexander Madison. Yeah, maybe. 100%. <laughs> that's, that's probably the top one in the league right now. But Yes, it is. Uh, I, I think that's all we have for fantasy wide receivers. Uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in and hanging out with Durf and Dylan and our special guest, Mike Reeves from Twist. If you want to give yourself one last plug before we kick you off. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, you can catch us Mondays at 1 p.m. on RTF Sports Network, followed by my show, Mike on the Mic, and our website, twistsportstalk.com. Twist! Twist. I love saying that. <laughs> All right, man. We'll talk to you soon. See yeah, you later. Appreciate you guys having me. Take it easy. Yeah, take it easy. All righty. And I think that's our show. I think so. All right. Well, thank you all. Like again, thanks for tuning in to On and Off the Field with Durf and Dylan. Make sure you go to onandoffthefield.com. You got all the about information on there, all of our charities, and make sure. You go to Mike and Mike Man Hour, their live show tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook, and tell them the code word BAND, B-A-N-D, to win that Amazon gift card tonight, B-A-N-D, BAND. That's that's what you need to do, all yeah. right? And that's, that's for July 21st, 2020, just in case anyone listens to this, because we will <laughs> upload it. And if you're listening to this like in August and you're like, oh, I'm going to go do that tonight, th- don't do that. No, this is <laughs> this is just for tonight. All right. And um, I believe it's our number one rated fantasy quarterback for the 2020 season, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. If you want to lead us off. All hail the jockstrap king. Yeah.